Hi, I am Al Beattie. This is tips number seven. It's an accumulation of tips that we published in Fly Tire Magazine over the years. We're going to talk about Peacock today. You know, it's one of our favorite body materials. That said, it's also a very fragile material. Today, we're going to show you how to make it a little bit more durable. Come on, let's take a look. This tip comes to us from George Utes from Oregon. He shared it with us at a recent fly fishing show at, in Oregon, in Albany, or, Albany, Oregon, as a matter of fact. But anyway, I've already applied a thread base, and I've got several peacock curls that I'm just tying on at the back and starting to wrap forward, binding them to the hook. Now, one of the things that's not even part of this trick, but you notice how this is starting to ride up on the side? Well, you can just take and give that a little push with your thumb as you go along you just keep doing that and it'll keep it right down there where you want it to be instead of having it twist up and over like it will do if you don't try to control it now let's trim off the waist and let me see let me find my whip finish tool there it is and I'll just tie this off and set that aside trim off the thread and also set that aside now we're going to take a little bit of this crazy glue in this case it's Loctite super glue, bl glue brush on and we're just gonna put it on the thread base only it's really important that we don't go any further than that. We want to use that bare part of the hook here in the front for, for other things. I want to go ahead and just wrap this forward. And I want you to notice that I'm grabbing not close to the hook, but out here on the end of ways. Because I want to not, don't want to compress any of those fibers as I wrap this forward. Now... You'll, you may not be able to see it on camera, but what it's doing is actually pushing the glue around and it'll anchor the fibers of the peacock right next to the thread and it really keeps it nice and bushy even when it's wet. Now let's uh, put this, let me take one more turn because I want to just anchor that. Well, now I've got it turned the wrong way. Okay, anchor it in my electronic test clip or hackle pliers and set that aside to dry. Well, I, I've already prepared one for you to take a look at. Let me take it out of the clip and I'll just put it back in the vise. And I'll trim off the waist. And I've got a nice, firm, tough body. Uh, you can pinch it and so forth and it stays nicely uh, inflated. And then when you're ready to go ahead and tie, you can just tie on the thread and continue on with your fly. But that's for, that's what we'll do for this fly. I'll set that aside. As you can see, in this clip, I've repositioned the hook so it's a little bit higher in the frame. And I'm also going to move everything over just a bit so that we have room over in this area to operate the tools and so forth that we're going to share with you. Now I've started out, I've attached Peacock just like before, wrapped to the front. Now I'm going to wrap back to the very back so that the thread and the Peacock are together. And uh, we're going to use a dubbing loop tool and there's several that we can use. First one is just a test clip type of a uh, haggle pliers. That's one that's very, very functional. Here's another. It's the call it we call it the dubbing whirl. We tend not to use it on peacock because peacock's so fragile. Here's another one that's awful good. And it's got the the hooks on one end and the rotator on the other and twists. And that that works very well. However, the one that we find that we like the really the best for the peacock is the this dubbing hook. And what we're going to do now is I'll set that hook down and we'll prepare to do a dubbing loop. And we're going to pull the thread down. And we're going to take our dubbing hook 
and hook it around the peacock and give it a twist and get loose there you there we go come back to the hook with the thread now I want you to notice something that I'm going to leave extra space in that thread this is kind of important and I'll wrap forward and you notice that we have the loop of thread on one side is a lot looser than the other we call it a dubbing loop and I want you to notice that as we twist this that we're building a peacock chenille right back here next to the hook Now let me trim off these waste pieces right here by the way you can also use fine copper wire and you'll make a peacock chenille but it it's also a uh, often called product called um, dubbing brushes but anyway let's start wrapping that forward and it makes a good strong body and as we advance notice that I'm making a turn or two each time I don't want to do too much because it's really easy to break this fragile material so I tighten it a little bit at a time because the only thing that's really becoming tight is the next couple of turns worth of chenille right there at that point make a couple of turns give it a couple of twists and it tightens it up again right next to the hook and we'll tighten that I got that one fiber just driving me crazy let me get rid of that there we go and we'll give it a couple of more turns and another turn till I meet my thread and we'll tie that off we'll take that hook and get it out of the way it's one of the reasons we like to use the hook on this stuff is it's um, a lot easier to get it out of the uh, application once you're done so let me tie that off here let me trim off the waist Now we have the thread left over from the loop. Let's get rid of that. And now I'll just go ahead and tie that off using our whip finish tool. And we'll have a peacock body that we can then build a fly around. But for right now, that's also a very, very strong body. Let me uh, reposition that again now a little bit. <clears throat> and reposition the camera so you can better see that and there we are this is the third way of toughening up the peacock and in fact it's the one we use the most just because it's the doggone fast we just call it the quick and easy method and you can call it whatever you wish you'll find that it is pretty straightforward I'm tying the peacock on you'll notice at the front rather than at the back. You'll find out here why in just a moment. And I'll trim off the waist right here and bring my thread back, <coughs> excuse me, to meet that peacock. Now I'm gonna reposition the camera. So I'm gonna turn it off for a moment while I reposition and get it in an easier place for you to observe what we're actually doing. Now with the camera running again, let's pull out a little bit of thread. You won't be able to see that. But what I want you to, <clears throat> to notice is that I'll be holding the thread in my fingers like this. And because I need to do something with the bobbin, I will be holding it while I'm holding like this. There we go. That's probably the easiest way is that I hold the thread in the bobbin in the pinch of my fingers. And I'll bring the peacock around now to meet the thread. I'll grab a hold of the th Now I'll hold the bobbin with part of my hand and I'll just start wrapping. I want you to notice that I do not let go of the peacock. It's starting to twist up a really good looking chenille as I wrap towards the back. 
Once in a while on a really long fly, you'll have to release some of the pressure, but for every time I make a turn around the hook, as long as I don't let go of that peacock, I have put a twist in the peacock around the thread that I'm holding in my hand as well. Now that I've reached the back, I will unwrap it and bring my thread around and tie off the waist end. Now what we usually do in this particular case is after we've trimmed off the waist, because we have our thread at the back of the hook, what we'll do got one wild one here that didn't want to get with the program. But anyway, what we'll do is we'll take whatever color thread we have and build sort of a um, a, uh, a tag. Now I've got one that doesn't want to get out of there and I would usually take a burner or, or some sort and get it out. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to make a longer tag and cover it up. But the truth of the matter is, uh, if we didn't have the camera set in between us, I'd get in a lot closer with a burning tool, cauterizing tool, and do a better job of covering that up. But we've covered it up with a tag. But here's the important part. Now when we come forward, we make the rib out of the thread, and it's strengthening the application even further. It makes a really tough application, and it goes on incredibly fast. Now let me grab my whip finish tool here. And we'll finish off that. Set that aside for the moment. And I'll run this back over to the center where it should be. And it gives you another body, another application.